from the new studio. Well, I did have a video with a tour whenever we were still doing some rehabbing. She's pretty much ready to be moved into, and I just finished my cutting table that I am so excited about and so proud of. And I have been filming the process of making this from start to finish. Um, I started this table like two years ago. Oh my gosh. Um, it could have been finished a lot sooner. There was a lot of waiting involved as far as waiting so I could actually set it up in the space and all that kind of stuff. But she's done. And I want to share my process with you. So, so this table, the main plans came from Closet Core Patterns blog years ago. And I pretty much stuck to her technique, except that I added a shelf in the middle. And I used uh, four by fours for the legs instead of two by fours. Um, and then I changed the dimensions to work for me, um, which basically I based around my cutting mat, which will go on top of here. I did paint um, the top of this, which is made out of a fiber called a board called Homa Soak, which is um, really great. You can stick push pins in it, um, which is great for rubbing off patterns. So I'll have this surface to use. I also painted it white so I could use it for um, flat lays and such. Um, but most of the time, my cutting mat will be on top of this. I also added a really fun fold-down ironing board feature in the front, um, which was a little tricky to figure out, but we did it. I, yeah, I think that's it. I, let's, let's cut to the, to the making part because that's way more exciting. And apologies in advance, Hi everyone, so I am working on my table, my new cutting table. Um, I'm using the plans from Closet Case Patterns. I did adjust the measurements a little bit to better accommodate my cutting mats that I already have and just the size of my room. I'm in the sanding phase right now. I got all of my supplies last week at the hardware store. I had everything except the brackets I needed and the stain and sealer. So we're gonna order those on the Amazon and hopefully get those soon. But I wanted to get all the wood prepped and ready for whenever the stain comes in. Uh, yeah, pretty exciting stuff. Uh, I can't wait to finish it, but the sanding part is pretty fun actually. So here we go. So something I'm learning is that sanding is very tedious and sometimes my arms feel like they're just going all over the place, but it's also kind of fun and very rewarding because you can see the wood smoothing out in different parts and um, the difference in the smoothness. So I just have to do the sides of these and then I'm going to move to a different kind of sandpaper um, to get it really smooth and ready to be sanded. Um, if you want to build a table like this, I highly recommend Heather's tutorial. It's really helpful. She really walks you through all the steps, tells you specifically what to order. You can adjust the measurements like I did for mine if your space um, is a little bit different size. I'm also adding a second shelf in the middle of mine and I adjusted a couple of other things as well. Instead of doing two by fours for the main legs, I'm doing four by fours on the recommendation of my husband that it would be sturdier and also um, without the uh, second little uh, cross beam that she has in her, um, on the bottom of her uh, table, I'll be able to drop my lower shelf even lower and have a middle shelf. Um, 
I don't know if that makes any sense to you if you're not looking at her um, drawing, but it just worked better for me. Side note, it is December 16th in, I'm in shorts and a short sleeve shirt on my porch. It's like 80 degrees today. So perks to being in Texas, I guess. So I'm day two of sanding <clears throat> right now and I've gotten all of the support brackets, the cross beams, all that stuff is done. I'm finishing up the last leg and I've been working on all the shelves and I'm hoping to finish all the sanding today. I was hoping to do the staining tomorrow, but I forgot to order the stain so it won't come in until next week sometime, which kind of sucks, but that's okay. Uh, I also had a major dumb dumb situation and I had to cut one of the posts that I already sanded shorter, which is fine. Um, but I also had to recut two new boards that had already, that I already sanded them and I need, but I needed them to be longer. So I had to do two new boards and re-sand two new boards, which was very annoying. That was because some of the measurements that I'm using are different than the measurements that Heather uses on her table. So some of my calculations just got mixed up, but now I think we are good to go. Should be smooth sailing from here on out. So let's get back to sanding. Now we're cooking. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. <laughs> everyone um back at it with my table i am in the staining process and i am using this minwax whitewash pickling stain that heather recommends that she uses on her table um it gives it a nice white natural look, wood look i've been doing two coats although looking back at i've done my legs and all of my cross beams and I kind of wish I stuck with one coat. Um, it's a little more artificial looking than I would like, but I've already coated it three times with polyurethane, so I'm not going to go back there. I'm just going to roll with what I have. I'm sure once the table is all together, it will look great. So just doing a lot of staining here and um, having fun watching it all come together. Hi everyone, I'm here working on my table again. I'm finally in the construction part, which is really, really exciting. I just brought all the pieces here to my sewing room, my future sewing room, to put it together because I know that it won't fit through the door <laughs> once, it's, once it's constructed. So I am just using these ties and getting everything all straight and just screwing screws through all the holes in these ties. Um, it's not so much difficult as it is just time consuming. Each tie takes about uh, 20 screws. So uh, yeah, that's what's going on with me. And I just wanted to check in with y'all and show y'all some more progress. I know you're watching this all in one go, but I am finally revisiting my tabletop 
my table project after a very long hiatus. So new things that have happened, um, I have the top on, and I'll show you a close up of this in a second. The top material is a material called homosote, um, which is really great, and I really sought out, um, and I was told about it from the pattern maker that I used to work for, because you can stick push pins in the top of it. It's almost like a really thick cork, um, but cheaper than cork, and it's made out of recycled materials. So I have this homosote, and it is sitting inside a trim top um, for the table. I have my iron board connected here. This flips upwards. Um, legs are not fully really stable yet, so I'm not going to show y'all that yet. But today, I'm here in the studio, and I am finally giving this tabletop its final coat of paint, which is quite exciting. So, here we go. Tabletop is painted and it looks pretty great. It's just white. Um, so I will be putting my cutting board on top of this, but I wanted my cutting mat is obviously like removable, and I wanted a place to do nice flat lays and things like that on a white background and so I will have this underneath my cutting mat which I can just slide on and off as needed to take pictures. So the last things that I need to do for to finish the table, oh I also painted so you can see I have the ironing board folded up. I painted the legs of the ironing board and the last thing I need to do is obviously wrap this in batting and muslin, which I need to get some more batting. I have plenty of muslin. And I also painted the underneath of this just with like a very rough and dirty coat. But you can see there's some guides up here so that when we flip the table legs up. They're secure and we're gonna get some locks so that I can lock them in place so that when I flop the table up and down, the legs aren't just like flopping everywhere willy-nilly. And the very last thing before this table is officially finished is this middle shelf. I forgot when I installed it and I just put it in the middle um, in the direct middle of this space and I forgot that I wanted it to go a little bit more towards the top because I'm getting a very specific sized bin to go on the bottom shelf that needs to hold um, that will hold all of my patterns so this needs to be moved up which is gonna be tricky now that it's already together um, but my husband's gonna help me and I'm not gonna move it until I get those bins so I know for sure how much more space I need. And we're back! Today I am completing the final step of this very long and drawn out cutting table project. All worth it. It's all going to be worth it in the end. That's why I keep telling you this. So all I'm doing today is covering my ironing board with batting and muslin. And I'm covering the feet of the legs of the ironing board in some felt so that um, they're not scratching the floor. And then it's going to be done. Well, it'll be pretty much done. I might be raising the bottom shelf, as I mentioned, because 
Um, I, my pattern, it's only 12 inches tall and my pattern envelopes, I believe, are bigger than that. So, that is where I'm at right now. Very exciting. Let's get started. Okay, she is perfect. I use two layers of batting and two layers of muslin. There was some weirdness with the hinges that are over here. I ended up just whenever I folded the um, board down, I just push this up and stapled into here. I was kind of afraid to cut around the hinges because I didn't want, I mean, I guess there's not really anything pulling on it, but I didn't want everything to like tear and get, you know, out of whack. Very last thing, I got these cute little bolt things, which are going to hold the legs into these channels that we put under here um, to keep them so that I can, uh, when I put, pull this up, the legs aren't just like flopping around everywhere like they have been. And that is going to keep these in place. So these come with this little piece that really could connect right here. But I'm just going to put this single piece there because the bolt itself will be enough to keep the leg out of from falling off. Okay, that was a little tricky. <laughs> Thank you. 